Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson we will be looking at the magnetic field that gets created around a wire while the while electricity is flowing through. So as I just stated, when electricity goes through a wire there is a magnetic field that gets generated. So what does it look like? Well first of all if we look at the first image we know that current goes from positive to negative, right? Current being the letter, being represented, I should say, by the letter I. So electric current flows in this direction, from positive to negative. When this happens, you have a magnetic field that forms around the wire in a shape of a ring. So you have actually several rings that get created because the field is not just around the wire, but it extends a little bit. The further away you get from the wire, the less of a force there is. Now, this is just one set of rings, but you would actually have several rings like these. So think of a bunch of donuts, if you like, that are lining up around the wire. Now, how do we determine what the field looks like in terms of which way does it rotate because it actually rotates either clockwise or counterclockwise counter sorry clockwise depending on which way the current is going so i'm going to show you how to determine that this is called the right hand rule before i get to this i just want to point out a few things about this image so first of all we have the current i it flows in this direction it makes sense because the positive end of the setup is here, the negative end is here, and we know that current always flows from positive to negative. As I told you, the field that gets created from the flow of electricity is circular around the wire, and it will rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on the case. The symbol that represents the magnetic field is B with a little arrow on top. So capital B with a little arrow, this symbol here represents magnetic field, the magnetic field. Okay, so I'm going to get you to do a little bit of arts and crafts. Uh, normally when I teach this in class, this is what I have my students do. So I would like you to get a highlighter, ideally. It could be a pen or a pencil, but a highlighter is easier to hold. So I would like you to take a highlighter, get two pieces of tape. Um, transparent tape doesn't work as well, but it, if that's all you have, it's fine. And label one end positive and one end negative. And if you don't have tape at all, then you can always uh, determine the cap of your, of your highlighter to be, let's say, the positive or the negative, whichever one you want, but always stick to the same um, this, the same concept, if you like. If, if you label in your head the cap as positive, always think of it as the positive end of your wire. So the goal ultimately will be to hold your makeshift wire in the right orientation, depending on the case presented to you. So go ahead and um, make this. And then what we're going to do is analyze an image like this, for example, and try and mimic it using our, uh, our, our highlighter. So you can see in this case, I'm holding the highlighter in the same orientation as the image over here. The positive is on the left, the negative is on the right. And don't forget, we are using our right hand to hold it. It is called a right hand rule for a reason. So why is it called the right hand rule? Well, the I in right hand, I like to think of it as I for current. That's how I remember that the right hand rule is related to the current flow. We know that the flow is from positive to negative. Now the thumb represents the flow of the current, so it points in the direction of the flow. Since it always goes from positive to negative, my thumb in this case would point towards the negative, okay? And my fingers will wrap around my highlighter just like the rings of the field would. So my fingers, when I look at, if I'm holding my highlighter, I see my fingernails in front of me. My fingers are pointing towards my right. And so that means they're wrapping in this direction. They're wrapping counterclockwise. And you can see the rings of the actual field that would get produced are also turning counterclockwise. So your fingers represent the direction of the field, 
which is labeled as B normally with the little arrow on top. Okay, so this is another representation. We have the current flowing in this direction. So we would assume, if I take my pen for a second, we would assume that the negative is here and the positive is here. So that means my thumb has to point towards the negative, towards the direction of the current. And, <clears throat> sorry, my fingers are wrapping around in this direction the same way the circles here are turning counterclockwise, okay? So my fingers are mimic mimicking this. So that's what I want you to try and do. I want you to take your highlighter, hold it exactly like this over here. So your thumb should be pointing up, your fingers should be wrapping in that direction. Now I'll show you other um, images. So try and hold your highlighter like this, just to get comfortable with the various positions. So you would, for example, have the negative on that side, the current flows from positive to negative. So your thumb should be pointing in that direction and your fingers would be wrapping around downwards. So that means your, um, your field is coming from behind and it's turning like this. Okay, if you follow your fingers. Here, the current is going in this direction, right? So this is I, and your fingers are wrapping around like this, so the field is turning in this direction. Okay, so you could have several rings that go around the highlighter or the wire. They would all be turning in the same direction. If I take a look at these, this is a little bit more tricky. And don't forget, you always hold the highlighter with the right hand, okay? So it's always the right hand holding it. Now you have to twist your arm a little bit in this case. And I'm pointing out to you that it has to be the right hand because I often see my students switching hands because it's an uncomfortable position. Don't switch to hands. This is your right hand. So in this case, current is flowing in this direction. My thumb is pointing down. My fingers are wrapping around like this. So that means the field is turning like this, right? Like that. So it's going clockwise, okay? I'm showing you the same thing here just to show that my finger is pointing in that direction. So if I continue the ring all around, I can clearly show that the field is pointing or is turning, I should say, in this direction. So it's turning clockwise, okay? And the current is still going like this. So this is I and this is B, the magnetic field, okay? So this is how you're supposed to be holding your tool, your gadget, your very technological gadget. Okay, so practice holding it properly. I know it sounds silly, but I see some people having a hard time and we don't all have the same, um, the same ability to visualize in three dimension. So please go through these motions. This is gonna help you. Now, once you're comfortable with this, I'm gonna ask you to look at these drawings and try and draw. So hopefully you have a piece of paper nearby. Draw these four images and try and figure out how the rings, the magnetic field would look like around these wires based on the orientation of the current. Now, I wanna point out to you here, I'm giving you the electron flow. So the first thing you should think of is how does this relate to current? So I encourage you to pause the video right now, reproduce this, do the exercise and come back for the answers. Okay, so hopefully you uh, did the exercise. So let's look at the first one. So if you're holding your highlighter in the same orientation as this, now where's the positive, where, where is the negative? If the current is flowing in this direction, that means the positive had to be here, the negative had to be here. So your thumb should be pointing upwards. So that means, and I know that my rings are always circular, around my wire and you don't have to draw like 10 of them. Just a few is enough. Now I wanna remind you that the closer they are together, that means that the, the field is stronger. They never cross though, they never touch. Okay, so if I'm holding my thumb up, my fingers should be wrapping in this direction, okay? 
So if it wasn't clear to you before, now you have one example, you could pause the video now and try the other three. But if you've done the whole exercise, now let's take a look at the next one. So the next one, before I go to the next one, let's see, this here would have been like this image over here, okay? So this image, same as this one. Now, this image would be the same as this one over here, okay? That's the way I would be holding it. So if I go back to it, my current goes from positive to negative. So my thumb is pointing down. If my thumb is pointing down, my rings, are always always have the same shape if my thumb is pointing down my fingers are wrapping in this direction okay so I always have to look at and I know this one is awkward when you hold it when you hold it if you have to extend your index see which way your fingertip or your fingernail is pointing okay so if your fingers are in front of you are they pointing towards the right or towards the left or up or down depending on the orientation of the wire Next, we have this one here. So this, my current goes from positive to negative if I follow this. So if I do this, my fingers, or if I'm my fingernails, or my fingertips, are going upwards or downwards? If you said downwards, that is correct. Okay, so they're going downwards. So let's see if we have an image. Yeah, it would be like... Uh, this one over here. Okay, so my fingers are going downwards. Lastly, this one. So I'm giving you the electron flow. What you have to remember is that electrons are going from negative to positive. But we don't work with electron flow. We work with current. Current is opposite. So it goes from positive to negative, right? This is current. So that means my positive is here, my negative is here. So my thumb should be pointing towards here. If my thumb is pointing towards here, towards that end, my rings or my fingers would be kind of twirling, turning, pointing in this direction. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do this on your own. If not, I strongly suggest that you do the exercise again go back and do it until you get it right. This is important. Uh, you're going to get questions like these on a test guaranteed. Uh, no matter if you're in my class or anybody's class, this is what you need to be able to do when you master the right hand rule. You have to be able to figure out what uh, the magnetic field around the straight wire looks like. And it's about to get a little bit I don't like to say more complicated, just different, because we're going to look at another type of magnetic field afterwards in the next lesson uh, when we use a coiled wire. So it's important that you understand this to be able to also do the coil wired afterwards so you don't get mixed up. Okay, now sometimes uh, the wire will go up vertically and we will look at it from upwards as if we we have a bird's eye view i yeah a bird's eye view sorry of the whole setup so there is a, a symbol that we use for that we call that the output so if the current is going in this direction so if we were on top here and we're looking at the current basically coming at us we use this symbol to represent that so the current is coming towards us we see the tip of the current or the tip of the wire coming out of um, the page maybe that we're looking at okay so if we were to draw the field if we do the right hand rule we will we would see that the field is turning in this direction okay so I'm just gonna draw the field so the field is going around like this now if I put compasses all around I explained to you in the last lesson that the compasses are following the magnetic field. They're really mimicking the same thing. So all these little compasses are turning along or lining up with the magnetic field. So this is what it would look like from a bird's eye view, from looking from the top. And again, if the current is coming towards us through the screen or through the piece of paper that's on our desk, we put a dot as a symbol. Okay, so this is another way of representing it. 
the current is flowing in this direction, right, from positive to negative, and we have the field that is turning around like this. So the northern part, so if I have my field that's turning around like this, the northern part of the compass is always lined up with the field. It's pointing in the same direction. And the reason is if I close, no, sorry, if I break my field into a little section, let's I'll take this one. I know that my field, if you recall, always goes, goes from north to south. Okay, so my field goes from north to south. Well, it makes sense that my compass would line up in a sense in the opposite way. The north of my compass is attracted to the south of the field and the south of my compass is attracted to the north of the field. So if I break down my field in several sections, each compass will line up with that little section. If I break my field here, my field goes from north to south. So the northern end of my compass is attracted to the, the southern end of the field. The southern end of my compass is attracted to the northern end of my field. So my compasses line up with the field. They mimic the field. Okay, so this is how we interpret it. Now, if we have uh, the opposite case, if the current was going downward, so into my screen or into a piece of paper that's lying on your desk in front of you, you would have the following case. Now, we use a different symbol. We use an X. So the current is going in this direction, away from us, into the screen or into the desk. So don't forget, it goes from positive to negative. So the positive, if I rotate it a bit, it almost looks like an X. So that's how you can remember it, that the exit when it goes is when it goes away from you. If you're looking, you know, we'll draw an eye. This is a symbol for an, I think that's a symbol for an eye, like, you know, sideways. And this is, these are the eyelashes, something like that. Anyways, if you're looking from over here, well, the current is going away from you. So it's going from positive to negative. The positive looks like an X that has been pivoted. So that's how you can remember it. Now, if it goes like this, my field turns around my wire in this direction. So if it turns in this direction, my compasses will line up again and they will turn clockwise. The field is going clockwise. And you can even try to do the right hand rule. Your thumb would be pointing down, your fingers would be wrapping around in this direction. So that's it for what I wanted to explain to you about a straight, um, a straight wire and the magnetic field associated with the flow of electricity through that wire. Uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate and ask. Um, otherwise, in the next lesson, we will look at something somewhat similar. So it's going to be electricity flowing through a wire, but now in this case, the wire will be coiled. So make sure that you're really comfortable with this concept before you move on to the next lesson. So if you have questions, please ask. And otherwise, I will see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.